Hey, good afternoon. Um, this is going to be the video to help us finish section 5.2. So it's been a few days, so let's uh, review just where it was we we're going with 5.2. We had already talked about what a probability distribution is, and uh, there were three requirements for probability distribution. Uh, we had a numerical random variable x, um, or, uh, with values associated with corresponding probabilities. The sum of the probabilities had to equal one, and each of the probabilities has to be between zero and one. Out of all the different kinds of probability distributions you can have, this section, 5.2, focuses on binomial distributions, and there's certain requirements for binomial distribution. There have to be a fixed number of trials. The trials have to be independent, the outcomes for each trial can be classified into two categories, uh, success and failure, and the probability of success remains constant throughout. So uh, we had gone through an example involving flipping a coin. We had talked about the 5% guideline for cumbersome calculations. We'd use this um, coin example to kind of really understand the formula for a um, binomial distribution. And so let's relook at that. The probability of getting X successes among N trials is a combination out of N objects, take X at a time, multiplied by the probability of success occurring X times, and that's multiplied by the probability of failure, that's Q, multiplied by those two N minus X. That occurs in minus x times. Okay, we've gone through an example where we uh, rolled a die 20 times and got a 5 exactly 2 times. We made that case here. So, where we'll start for uh, today then is to look at more uh, examples. So, we're going to try this one here. So, here it says you're taking uh, a 12 question multiple choice quiz. There's answers A, B, C, and D. Uh, as possible answers. So there are four possibilities. We're going to assume that one ex and exactly one is the right answer for any given question. And we're going to guess on all the questions. We want to find the probability that we get exactly eight correct. So uh, first, uh, combinations. There is a total of 12 questions. And we're looking to get eight of them correct. The probability of getting any one question correct is 0.25. You have a one in four chance of being right, and one fourth is equal to 0.25. We need that to occur eight times. You have a 75% chance of being wrong on any one question, and that will happen for the remaining four questions. So that's the setup. So let me run that through the calculator. and we get uh, a probability of about 0 0.002. All right, so make sure as we work through each of these problems that you're uh, stopping the video and then trying it on your own before you see the solutions. Okay, so one more example. Suppose that we have a batch of electronic components and somehow it's known that 3% are defined of the electronic components are defective. If we select 20 of the components, we want to know the probability that exactly two will be defective. So give this some thought and try it yourself. Pause the video and then restart it when you're ready to see uh, the solution. All right, so here we have uh, 20 of the components selected and we want two to be defective. The probability of any one component being defective is 0.03. That's our 3%. That's going to occur twice. The remaining 18 will be def uh, not defective, and that will occur with probability 0.97. Okay, so that is the setup. So then let's go ahead and calculate that. 
So the combination piece works out to 190. As you're doing these calculations, it's a good idea to try to keep as much of the calculation in your calculator as you can. And it looks like about 0 0.0988. That's how that take, uh, shapes up. Okay. In the next one, we're going to end up using the complements rule. And what's going to tell us that we want to use the complements rule is on this one, we're rolling a die, and we want to know the probability that we get uh, at least two fives out of six rolls. Well, if we're rolling the die six times and we want to get at least two fives, we would want to count exactly two, exactly three, four, five, and all six being fives. And that's a lot of possibilities. And uh, we'd have to calculate each probability and then add them. So instead, we'll say, uh, if we, what is the probability that this fails to be true? If you don't get at least two fives, what has to happen. If you don't get at least two fives, then you have to get fewer than two fives. So that will be one minus the probability of getting less than two fives. Less than two fives would be just either zero or one. So let's find that. We'll still have to use the binomial um, formula twice, but that's better than doing it like four times, right? So one minus, and then less than two fives, that will be either zero or one. So let's do for zero first. Out of the six rolls, we will get zero fives. The probability of getting a five is one sixth. That will occur no times. The probability of failing to get a six, a five, excuse me, the probability of getting Failing to get a five will occur five six probability. That has to occur all six times. Then one five out of the six rolls, we want one five. One sixth chance to get a five that occurs once. Five six chance to not get a five and that occurs the remaining five times. Okay, so let's run that through the calculator and see how it comes. All right, so going through the calculations, um, and I want to be careful how you type all this stuff into the calculator. We ended up with the probability of getting no fives being about 0.335. The probability of getting one five was what, five, six, the fifth power. So. Uh, going through the details, we end up with about 0.264 for the probability of getting at least two fives using the indirect approach. Okay, so uh, that's the end of that one. So in the next example, which is drawn from the book, we'll see that um, we can apply the binomial probability formula and we'll keep our eye out for the opportunity to use the complements rule uh, as well. So let's take a look at the problem. So it says, based on a Harris poll, among adults who regret getting tattoos, 20% say they were too young when they got their tattoos. Assume that five adults who regret getting tattoos are randomly selected and find the indicated probability. So first, we want to find the probability that none of the adults say they were too young to get tattoos. So none of the adults out of five, so out of five adults who regret getting tattoos, will say none say they were too young. 20% of the people say they were too young. So that will occur with probability 0 0.20. We need that, that to occur no times. If 20% say they were too young, then 80% don't say they were too young. That will have to be all five. Let's go ahead and calculate that. Okay. 
And that works out to be about 0.32768. Next, we want to find the probability that exactly one of the selected adults says that he or she was too young. So one thing nice about this is once you kind of get the hang of the setup, it is a lot easier to make kind of variations on a first question. So like for this one, all I needed to do was change the zeros into ones. And then remember that if we're selecting a total of five people, that if there was one success, then the remaining four had to have been failures. So let's go ahead and see how this turns out. That's about 0 0.4096. Okay, so now for part C, it says find the probability that the number of selected adults saying they were too young is zero or one. So that basically is just asking us to make the sum of our answers for parts A and B. So that's about 0.73728. All right. And then finally for part D, if we randomly select five adults is one, an unusually low number, who say they were too young to get tattooed. So we could also say significantly low there. And the answer there is no, it's not significantly low. Because the probability is about 0.74, right? So it's way more than 0.05 which was our criterion for determining whether something was uh, significantly low or not. If you continue to think about this one, um, it should make sense that one is not significantly low. If we're taking groups of five adults, 20% of five adults is just one adult. So uh, having one uh, indicate that they were too young is not going to be unusually low. Okay, so we just have a couple of more examples uh, here. Um, when someone buys a ticket to an airline flight, it says there's a 0 0.0995 probability that the person will not show up for the flight. And then we're given a source. Here it says that this particular airplane, the Beechcraft 1900C uh, jet can seat 19 passengers. We want to know if it's wise to book 21 passengers for a flight on this plane. So if the jet can hold 19 people, and we want to know, well, if we book 21 people, then uh, we're basically gambling that um, people are not going to show up. Because, of course, if 21 people actually show up, then we have to turn away two people, you know, res reschedule them on a different flight or something, which is going to uh, annoy people. So we want to decide if that's... Um, a reasonable gamble or not. So what I would do is think about under what circumstances this is gonna be a problem. So this is gonna be a problem for you uh, if 20 or 21 people show up. If 19 people show up, it's fine. You've got a full plane. But if 20 or 21 show up, if 20 or 21 show up, that means that there is either zero or one no-shows. So we want to know what is the probability of having either no no-shows or one no-show. So if you book 21 passengers and everybody shows up or one person no-shows, that's still gonna be a problem for you. And so we want to know what is the probability of this occurring. So probability of no no-shows. So that's a binomial problem. Out of the uh, 21 booked passengers, we're looking for none to no-show. The probability someone no-shows is 0 0.0995. That's going to occur zero times. And then the complement, 1 minus 0 0.0995, that has to occur all 21 times.
So we'll calculate that here in a minute. And then for one no-show, that's going to be very similar. We have out of 21 uh, booked passengers, we want one no-show. That will have to occur once. And so we'll have 20 uh, non-no-shows. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate those couple values. All right, so going through the calculations, we end up with a probability of about 0.11 that there will be no no-shows and a probability of about 0.569 that there will be one no-show. So the probability of either zero or one no-show will be the sum of those two probabilities. And that works out to be about 0.3676. So to answer the question, is that a good idea or not to book 21 passengers? I would say, no, it's not a good idea. I guess it depends on how non-confrontational you are. Um, what makes it not a good idea is that about 36% of the time, a little over a third of the flights that you do this with, you're going to have somebody who is irritated with you because you overbooked the flight. So overall, not a good idea. Okay, so one more example. Uh, okay, so here says a surgical technique uh, it has a 70% chance of success. The surgery is performed on seven patients. We want to know the probability that the surgery is successful for exactly five patients and then at least five patients. So for exactly five patients, out of seven surgeries, we're looking for five to be successful. It has a 70% chance to be successful for any one surgery. We need that to occur five times. If the success rate is 70% then the failure rate is 30%, that needs to occur for the remaining two cases. So we'll calculate that here in a minute. For B, at least five patients would be five, six, or seven. Five, six, or seven. So a natural question is to think, okay, well, maybe I should use the complements rule here. If you do decide to use the complements rule, it would be fewer than five, which would be zero, one, two, three, or four. And that works out to be more cases. So um, nice to think about the complements rule, but in this case, it doesn't actually help you. So for this one, we'll have um, exactly five, which is our answer to this, whatever it turns out to be. And then for six, and then finally for all six. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what that works out to. All right, so the probability of success for exactly five patients worked out to be about 0.317. For uh, at least five patients, we need five, six, and seven. So for five, we have the 0.317. For six, it worked out to be about 0.247. And for seven, about 0.8. 082. Altogether, that makes a probability of about 0.646. All right, so due to the length of the video, we're going to cut this one into two parts. So this is the uh, end of the first part.